I recently came across a viral video of a mosquito killing laser over a month ago. Initially I thought it was pretty cool as I've wanted something like this to exist for a while now. Don't we all, right? Beyond the fact that mosquitoes are pretty annoying, they also kill over 700,000 people each year. Just recently I saw that the people who had made the device have an Indiegogo campaign where, now with about a week to go, they have raised nearly $2 million Canadian. They are offering the Pro device for about $900 and the Basic for about $700. However, I'm going to show you why the likelihood that they are able to do what they claim it can is pretty low, perhaps less than 1%. The main problem is that they need to scan a lot of points very quickly, and galvanometer technology, which is what they are planning to use to do the scanning, just isn't fast enough. And while exaggeration and embellishment are common among tech startups, the fact that this product got so much attention and also happens to overlap with something I know a bit about, I wanted to make a video talking about the challenges it faces. I'll put important references in the description box. As a bit of background, Photo on Matrix isn't the first to try to create something like this. In fact, we've been promised that we're going to get something like this for 15 years. In 2010, Nathan Mirbold, a former CTO of Microsoft, claimed that his team had built such a system and they showed what seemed to be a live demo of it working on stage at a TED Talk. We invent. Uh, my company invents uh, all kinds of new technology in lots of different areas. And we do that for a couple of reasons. I actually believe that the prototype worked to some extent, but for whatever reason, they seem to have stopped development a couple of years ago. And this isn't something that you can buy today. I suspect, based on the technology that they were using and the equipment that they were using, that it would have been very expensive to build something like this, potentially over $10,000. Since then, there have been a few prototypes, some demos, and a few research papers on the idea showing various concepts. So that brings us to Photon Matrix. Let's start by looking at what they claim it can do. And by the way, most of this is coming from their three minute promo video or from their Indiegogo launch page. Okay, so here's a list of their claims for the pro model. It can lock onto a mosquito within three milliseconds. It does 50,000 scans per second. It works up to six meters away for the pro model only. It can kill up to 30 mosquitoes per second. It has a maximum scanning angle of 90 degrees. A 20,000 milliamp hour battery can power it for eight hours. It won't fire when larger objects like humans and pets are present. It works with flight speeds up to one meter per second. And it has a success rate approaching 100%, they claim. So, how does the device work? Or at least how are they proposing it will work? Here's the visualization I put together to help understand it. This is a top-down view of the device showing the 90 degree scan area with the six meter range. And here's a front view of that same plane. Basically, they claim that Photon Matrix will scan this plane really fast with a lower power laser using LiDAR. And then once it senses a mosquito, it locks onto it and blasts it with a high power laser to kill it or at least prevent it from flying. That's really all you need, right? Let me talk about what I see as being the fundamental flaw with what they are doing. It comes down to only operating in a single plane, as opposed to having 3D tracking. When you have something as small as a mosquito crossing a plane, you don't have much time to work with. This makes something like what they are claiming so, so hard with any technology at all, let alone the low cost technology that they're using to keep the price under $1,000 simply because of how little time they have to A, find that there is a mosquito, and then B, shoot it down. We already saw that Photon Matrix has been designed to work for mosquitoes up to one meter per second. As a side note, this upper limit for flight speed is reasonable, although perhaps a bit on the slow side. I looked through a bunch of papers, and while the flight speed is going to depend on the species and conditions in which you're measuring it, and most articles are reporting average speeds instead of top speeds, it seems as though most mosquitoes spend most of their time flying under one meter per second. My estimate is that something like 95% or maybe even 99% of the time that mosquitoes are flying, it's under one meter per second. That being said, this data from a 2024 paper shows a distribution of typical flight speeds for the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And while these are the fastest speeds I found in any paper, roughly 10% of the time these buggers are going faster than one meter per second. Some were even recorded going faster than 1.8 meters per second. But the one meter per second speed limit seems quite reasonable for a product like this. And it also happens to make the math a bit easier since one meter per second is equivalent to one millimeter per millisecond, 
right? Since there are 1,000 millimeters in a meter and also 1,000 milliseconds in a second. Now that we've discussed mosquito speeds, we need to discuss mosquito sizes. Photon matrix states that it can find mosquitoes within the 2 to 20 millimeter size range. Again, this is very appropriate as depending on who you ask and how you measure, most mosquitoes are between 2 and 25 millimeters in size. There is a comment on the Indiegogo campaign, however, that states that for smaller insects 1 to 2 millimeters in size, the device only works up to 3 meters away. So even here they are saying that the device doesn't work on smaller insects that are further away. But we're going to do our calculations for the 6 meter range device, so the pro device. So this implies that insects 3 millimeters and larger can be detected up to 6 meters away. And you know what? Let's just be generous and we'll assume that the smallest insect the system needs to detect at 6 meters away is 4 millimeters. The design challenges would be even harder if you assume the 3 millimeter size, of course. Here's that view showing the 90 degree scanning plane, but we want to zoom in and think about what's going on as our mosquito crosses that plane. I've added a grid overlay where each square is one millimeter wide and one millimeter high. So here's the mosquito roughly to scale with the grid overlay, and here's the kill zone plane added in. And to give us something a bit easier to work with, we're going to represent the mosquito with a red circle that is four millimeters across. If the mosquito is flying down through the plane, this is what it would look like. With a flight speed of one meter per second, or again, one millimeter per millisecond, and a size of four millimeters, the math here is pretty straightforward. This means that it takes four milliseconds to cross this plane. At t equals zero, we have the mosquito making contact with the plane. At t equals one millisecond, the mosquito has gone down one millimeter. Here it is at two milliseconds, and again at three milliseconds. At four milliseconds, the mosquito leaves the plane on the other side and is no longer in contact with the plane. So that means that we have about four milliseconds to both identify that there's a mosquito and then shoot it down with a laser before it gets through to the other side. That's not a lot of time to work with. A human blink takes a few hundred milliseconds. Let's talk about how Photon Matrix is doing the detection. As we can see in their video and also stated in their FAQ section, they're using a galvanometer to scan the plane. They're using a LiDAR module to do the detection and the galvanometer is steering the light path so that it can check every possible spot where the mosquito could be. And then once the mosquito is found, it's zapped with a high power laser. Now that we understand how the system works, we'll do some simple math to see what sort of scan rate is needed to make sure we find the mosquito before it gets more than halfway through. So we'll design for detecting within two milliseconds. This means that the system has to check every possible spot that could have a mosquito crossing every two milliseconds. So what is the minimum spacing that we need to have to make sure that no mosquitoes slip past undetected. If it's too wide, you'll miss mosquitoes. We could use a spacing of four millimeters, but with this spacing, you only get the full four millimeter width for a fractionally small time. Theoretically, it's, it's an infinitely small time, right? On the other hand, we could have spacing of something like every one millimeter, and then you could get maybe three hits per mosquito, but that is unnecessary and would reduce overall performance. Something like three millimeters is probably suitable with our four millimeter mosquito. So now we have the spacing that we need. And as a reminder, we're going to scan the full line every two milliseconds. So that means scanning the full line 500 times each second. Let's do the math on how many points this is for the 90 degree scanning angle at six meters away, which is the hardest scenario for the system. Here's the top down view of the kill plane, and we need to know what the arc length is. We have a radius of six meters, so the full circumference is two pi r, and since we want the length of a quarter of the circumference, we divide by four. So the length of the arc is about 9,000 millimeters. And with our assumption that we need to scan every three millimeters, that means that there are about 3,000 points that need to be checked. And every set of points need to be checked once every two milliseconds, so that's about 1.57 million points that need to be checked every second. Okay, all good. As a side note, to achieve this sort of performance, you should be checking each point more like once every one millisecond because even if you assume that the mosquito is a circle, you don't really get a guaranteed hit until the mosquito has traveled down at least one millimeter. So in that case, where the mosquito has been missed on the first scan, the mosquito could travel up to three millimeters before being detected. However, that is somewhat a worst case scenario so we'll just assume that as long as the laser checks each point every two milliseconds, it doesn't miss any. Now we need to look at galvanometer performance. 
we're going to ignore the fact that they say that they can scan 50,000 times per second for a moment, but we'll come back to that in a bit. Let's see what the best galvanometers are capable of. So galvanometers, some people call them galvos. They are the things that are controlling the lasers you might see at a concert or a laser show. They're pretty cool devices where the angle of the rotor is proportional to the current running through the coil. By being able to control the angle of the mirror, you can control where the laser is shining. However, there are limitations of physics. Since you're moving a mirror that has weight and momentum, there is a limit to how fast you can move it. Each time you move it, you have to wait for the mirror to settle. This is called the settling time. And while this is fast, it still takes some time to happen. There are control methods to optimize this to optimize the settling time, but I won't get into that as it's not too important for this discussion. Since the main problem you're dealing with is momentum, getting the mirror as small as possible also helps to minimize the settling time. Here's a spec sheet from the fastest galvanometer I could find online. It has a small settling time of 75 microseconds. So that's 0.075 milliseconds. And this is for a small change in angle, typically 0.1 degrees. And just to illustrate that, that point a little better, here's a diagram that shows what happens when you tell the galvo to move to a new position. After you give it the signal to change to a new position, there's some lag for the mirror to settle at the new position. For a larger angle change like a few degrees, that settling time is higher since the mirror has to accelerate to a higher speed and then decelerate from that higher speed. So that's really what you're waiting for when you tell the galvanometer to go to a new angle. So knowing that, what is the maximum number of points that a galvanometer can accurately scan in one second? Let's assume that Photon Matrix somehow has access to a galvanometer with a settling time of 50 microseconds. Again, this is faster than the 75 microseconds that I was able to find. So with that, we'll get a maximum scanning rate of 20,000 points per second. But in order to get the performance that Photon Matrix is claiming it can do, you need something that can scan over 1.5 million points per second. So with using a galvanometer, we only have about 1.3% of the speed that is needed. And even if you give the device all 4 milliseconds to find the mosquito rather than just 2 milliseconds, you're still only able to scan the points at 2.6% of the speed that you need. This is what I see as being the fundamental flaw of what they are trying to do with Photon Matrix, and I'm not aware of any way to get around this problem. Let's talk briefly about the 50,000 scans per second that they state. If you search for Galvos, you'll see that they like to proudly display their scanning rate or speed. Here's one from AliExpress. And for those who aren't aware, AliExpress is kind of like Amazon for products from China. They're pretty low cost and they have a lot of random tech things like this. This galvanometer claims 50K speeds, just like the one that Photon Matrix is claiming to use. On the low end, you'll see galvanometers with claim speeds of 15 kps, and then on the higher end, you'll see speeds up to 50 kps. And the price goes up with the faster scanning rates. Sometimes they will just state K instead of kpps, where the kpps stands for K or 1000 points per second. On this galvanometer, you'll notice that it says ILDA 50K. The ILDA part is very important. So ILDA stands for International Laser Display Association. They have a standard for tuning laser scanners called the ILDA test pattern. Again, I won't get into the details, and to be completely honest, I haven't fully researched this, but basically since you're performing a laser light show, you don't need the laser to fully settle between each point. By using the ILDA test pattern, you can tune things like damping or speed to get your laser scanner to display it as accurately as possible. It's particularly important to know that the larger the scan angle, the less fast your laser scanner could create this ILDA test pattern. In fact, that same Galvo that's claiming the 50 kps speeds shows how fast it is at different scan angles. It's saying that it can do 50 kps at 6 degrees, but only 35 to 40 kps at 15 degrees. I would be skeptical of this performance anyway, as apparently it's quite common for Galvo manufacturers to exaggerate their capabilities. And yes, they are selling this on AliExpress for $570 Canadian. Mind you, that's for two galvanometers since you need to have both an X and a Y axis for scanning in 2D instead of just a plane, but we'll get to pricing later. Now that we've talked about galvanometer capabilities, we need to talk about the laser killing step of the process. Let's assume that we've been able to find and lock onto the spot where the mosquito is within two milliseconds. We now have less than two milliseconds to kill the mosquito. Thankfully, we have some pretty good research on how much laser power it takes to kill a mosquito. 
before we get into this, I'll just say that while I think the first step of finding the mosquito is next to impossible with a galvanometer, I think there is a chance that you can kill the mosquito within two milliseconds. But the caveat here is that it requires a very powerful laser, and very powerful lasers end up costing quite a bit. When you're blasting the mosquito, how well you can kill it, or even just disable it, depends basically on four things. The two most important are the power of the laser and the pulse duration. The other two that also play a role are the wavelength of the laser and the beam diameter or the spot size. Here's a table from a 2016 paper which shows a variety of tests that they performed on mosquitoes. The main thing I want to point out is that they determined that in order to kill 90% of mosquitoes with an 8.5 watt laser takes 5.7 milliseconds. The LD90 stands for lethal dosage for 90% of mosquitoes. They also experimented with Q-switch lasers that were able to kill mosquitoes with a 10 nanosecond pulse. So pretty much instantaneously, you wouldn't even see the mosquito's wing move in that time. However, from what I could find, the cheapest of these types of lasers cost about $1,000, they wouldn't fit in the form factor of the prototype of the photon matrix device, and they also consume a lot of power to operate. So I doubt that photon matrix is planning to use them. In fact, in a comment on the Indiegogo campaign, the creator states that they are using a 450 nanometer solid state laser with a pulse power of 40 watts and a pulse duration of 10 milliseconds. I'm not sure where they're getting the laser from or how much it costs, but as I've shown, to get it to do what they are claiming, you really only have four milliseconds to work with. I can believe that they are able to kill a mosquito with a 10 milliseconds, but how many mosquitoes will actually spend 10 milliseconds crossing the plane, assuming that you can detect it instantly? I don't wanna make this video too long, but let's quickly touch on some other concerns I have. Starting with power consumption, Photon Matrix claims it can run on a 20,000 milliamp hour power bank for eight hours. Let's do some super rough math here. Assuming that this is a lithium ion power bank, the nominal voltage is 3.7 volts. This means that it holds about 74 watt hours of energy. If you have a gavel running pretty fast, it uses something like 50 watts. So that only gets you about 1.5 hours of use. And that's ignoring all the other things like the millimeter wave radar that has to run all the time, any computation, and powering either of the lasers, one of which is a 40 watt laser, remember? I just don't see how you can get eight hours of battery time, and I'd be shocked if you could even get a full hour out of it. As for safety, I don't have any huge concerns with this, and they can certainly err on the side of not firing if there's anything at all that looks like a pet or a human. From the examples of millimeter wave radar, it seems like it can detect the presence of a human or a pet in the area in front of the device, but since the sensor has relatively poor resolution, it might not be able to distinguish between someone in the firing plane versus just being below it, and so it might not fire out of caution. And while being cautious is a good thing of course, it makes me wonder how well it will work when there are people close to the firing range. And then there is still a certain risk with things like mirrors, and people standing more than 10 meters away that could accidentally be shot in the eye. And lastly, this one perhaps doesn't matter too much, but I can't find any information at all about the creator of the device. I can't even find a photo of Jim Wong. And while of course you don't need any formal education to build cool things, the fact that I can't find any information about him or his qualifications online certainly doesn't help me be more confident in his ability to actually make the device that can do what he claims it can. There's also some indication that even the creator doesn't know if it's possible to do what he's claiming. In this comment here from the launch video on YouTube, he states, in fact, the most crucial part of this project is whether the technology and plan can be realized. So that sort of speaks for itself. As with many Kickstarter and Indiegogo campaigns, it's up to the backer to decide how likely it is that they will get what they paid for. But I personally would not be backing something like this until I had more evidence that it actually does what it says it can do. At this point, I would be very surprised, firstly, if it ever gets built and sent out to people, and then secondly, even if it does get made, I'd be even more surprised if it can even do anything close to what is being claimed. I could see that a version that uses the technology that is in the demo could kill some mosquitoes, but the sweep angle would have to be much less and the range might have to be reduced to something like two or three meters. And even then it might only have a 80% success rate with larger mosquitoes and a 50% success rate with the smaller ones. But even that might be too optimistic. As for the demos they have shown of it working, we'll assume that they are real and haven't been faked. My guess is that they are only scanning a smaller area and that there is some element of luck involved with getting a slow mosquito. The videos only show it working within about one meter away. So that also makes it much easier to get it to work compared to having to work at six meters away. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Please give the video a like if you found it helpful. If anyone thinks I might have overlooked something, and that includes Jim Wong, of course, please let me know.
Cheers.